Greetings everyone and welcome to the second installment of the Introduction to Amplifier Classes video series. This is the second in what should be four videos. In the previous video I talked about Class A type amplifiers. Today I'm going to talk about Class B and Class AB amplifiers. And like I say, this is kind of an introduction. One reason for doing this is because of some lack of standards or perceived lack of standards, or at least it seems to me, there is some confusion and we will see some of that today. So I want to keep these videos fairly short, so let's get right into it here. So a Class B amplifier, what is Class B? Well, if you recall from the Class A amplifier, the device is turned on for the full cycle of the waveform. But Class B, it's a little bit different. It's only on for 50% of the cycle. And you can probably already see a problem with that. If you try to put a music signal to such an amplifier, it's going to sound pretty terrible. So we have to make a little change to the circuit here. So what we do is we add a second transistor that will handle the other part of the waveform. So the top transistor is handling the top half of the waveform and the bottom transistor is handling the bottom part of the waveform or the negative part. And this can apply to other devices like MOSFETs or vacuum tubes. Well, the problem with this solution is that, well, it doesn't work so elegantly. It, there's still a problem we have to tackle. Well, with these devices, these bipolar junction transistors, when we tie the bases together like this and put a signal into it, we have to have a certain voltage before we can forward bias the base to emitter junction. It has to reach around 0.6 volts. Conversely, on a PNP type transistor, a negative 0.6 volts. Now the thing to remember, when the voltage is below those thresholds, the transistors are turned off. They're not conducting. So we have a window of voltages where there will be no output. And that's going to cause distortion. So we're not really conducting for the full 360 of our signal. There's a small window of voltages near zero, the plus 0.6 and minus 0.6, where the transistors are off. And it gives us what's known as crossover distortion. So as I indicated here, those are the big disadvantages of Class B. You have that large crossover region causing distortion. However, there are some tricks you can do to make this circuit work. And probably, I'd say about six or so videos ago, I made a Class B amplifier. What I did was I used this circuit here and took an op amp, which fed the signal into this output stage, and enclosed the output stage in the negative feedback loop. And the op amp feeds a corrective signal into the output stage. So what it's doing is slewing real fast to try to cover over that dead zone. And it does work half decently. I mean, it's not a hi-fi amplifier. There's a couple other little things I did. But if you watch that video, you see how it works pretty good. Now, I'm aware of a company called Quad back in the 70s. They took this further, you know, using a more complex circuit. I mean, the output devices still had the bases tied together, but they used advanced design to help clean up that crossover. Because in my circuit with the op amp, there's still a tiny little notch and if I listen very carefully, I can still hear kind of like a fuzziness to the sound, especially at lower volumes when I put my ear near the tweeter. So like I said, it's not perfect, but with the quad amplifier, they used the more advanced design to get rid of that notch. So they actually had a legitimate Class B amplifier. The theoretical efficiency of this design is 78.5%. In the real world, it's of course, it's going to be less. But the nice thing is, without having bias current flowing, there's no thermal issues you have to worry about with the transistors. So that's what I said here with the advantages. There's no idle bias. And when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about the output stage. In its simplest form, it's a pretty simple design. And like I say, there's no thermal issues with it. 
But we want to take it a step further and move on to what is called Class AB amplifiers. Enter the Class AB amplifier. So it's quite similar to the Class B amplifier, except we split apart the bases and insert a voltage source there. And what that does is kind of think of it as making up for that dead zone. It keeps these transistors slightly turned on. So if you remember, we had a 0.6 volts on this transistor and a negative 0.6 volts on this one. So we had 1.2 volts. So we add a voltage of around 1.2 volts here. And that's just enough to turn these transistors on. We adjust this so it allows a small bias current or collector current to flow through the amplifier's output stage from the positive supply rail to the negative supply rail or ground, which, whichever the case may be, keeping those transistors turned on even when the signal is crossing zero. So we still have the upper transistor handling the top part of the signal and the bottom, the lower part of the signal. In fact, with that little bit of bias, they're overlapping ever so slightly here. So that eliminates that big dead zone. So now the transistors are truly conducting the whole signal. The top still handling the top and the bottom, the lower portion, but it's a smooth transition. In fact, with a small signal, which is inside the overlapped portion, the amplifier is actually in class A. And when it's outside that, it's class B. So that's where it gets its name. Now here's the confusion. Some engineers do not consider class AB to be a valid name for an amplifier class because to them it's just a class B stage but with a little bit of bias. And yeah, that makes sense. That's essentially what it is. However, because it's not really a standardized thing, it is confusing. Because you'll go to a data sheet, for example, I often see data sheets for audio power amplifier ICs, and it'll say class B amplifier. Well, it's not a class B amplifier. It's actually a class AB amplifier, as I'm defining it here, because it does have some bias in its output stage. So the advantages are greatly reduced crossover distortion and what I call a happy medium. It's a lot more efficient than Class A. If you recall, Class A can be 25% to 50% in some designs, but usually it's 25%. Those are theoretical numbers. The actual efficiency will be less. The actual efficiency of a Class AB amplifier depends on the bias current chosen, because even at idle, the amplifier is going to be conducting a small amount of current. Whereas a pure class B, the transistors would be off if there's no signal going in. Usually you see the efficiency around 65-70% or so. And like I said in the class A video, efficiency is measured at the maximum signal before clipping. In real world use, an amplifier might be played at a low volume or even sitting idle for a lot of the time. Where a class A B amp is drawing very low current. It's only a, you know, a few tens of milliamps in the output stage. Where a Class A amp could be drawing quite a bit, you know, several amperes of current. So even sitting idle, it's dissipating a lot of power where a Class A B amp is dissipating very little. So some disadvantages, well as I say, even sitting idle there's going to be some dissipation, but it's generally pretty small. It's one reason why back in the 50s when transistor radios started coming out, they moved to Class AB because they needed a circuit that wasn't going to use a lot of power. You know, you didn't want to run your batteries down too quickly. Another disadvantage is it needs some sort of thermal compensation. So what happens as the transistor is drawing idle current, they're going to warm up. And as they warm up, the gain increases or another way to look at it, the forward voltage drop from base to emitter decreases and it starts to draw more current. This becomes a positive feedback cycle where these transistors just get hotter and hotter until they destroy themselves. So part of this voltage supply here we put across the bases 
is also a thermal compensation network which monitors the temperature and adjusts the voltage to keep the current in check. So whether the amp has been delivering a lot of power and the heat sinks are real hot, you know, the transistors are quite hot, or you just first turn it on, the bias current will be kept about the same. So yeah, it's not really a problem with a, a decent thermal compensation circuit, but it's just an extra piece that needs to be included in a Class AB amplifier circuit. So what do I think about Class AB? It's my favorite class of audio amplifier. A lot of amplifier designs have been made using Class AB, including some extremely low distortion amplifiers. It's not that difficult to make a pretty good Class AB amplifier that delivers very low distortion. It doesn't have to be overcomplicated. And that's what I grew up on playing with circuits and even uh, audio amplifier chips. Of course, nowadays we're moving more to Class D for very good reason, which we'll talk about in the next video. But my heart still lies with Class AB, so I can say there. So there you have it, the basics of Class B and Class AB amplifiers, a bit of confusion, and a little bit on how they work. Stay tuned for Class D coming up next, and I thank you for watching.